Hey team, welcome to the Charge Forward Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Cripps, coming to you from HitLab Studios. Today, my guest, Mr. Jason Lewis, owner and operator of LG Landscape and Services. Jason, thanks for coming in. Oh, thank you. I'm humbled, to say the least. Man, I love it. You know, a lot of times we have people in here that have been, you know, in their field or they've been an entrepreneur for 20 years, 30 years. And so the conversation is drastically different. Um, but you, you've been an entrepreneur three ish years. This is going fourth, fourth year, um, full time, had a public job for ever. So yeah, this is the fourth year going into it. All right. So you were at that, that other job for how long? Well, have to go back a bit. So, you know, I was young, finally went to, went to school a little bit, got my two year degree, started it. Uh, it was Bell South at the time there in 98. Stayed there till 2014. And came, AT&T took over about 20, about 2000-ish, 2001, I think. Yeah. You know, and it just slowly descended into a ball of fire. It was just terrible. It was just a good night. So it's, it's not the right situation anymore. No, it was not Bell South. Bell South was like, I mean, they all say Ma Bell. It was... It was great. It, it was just an interesting job. Everybody just totally different than different world as well. Yeah. So I uh, still had a telephone on the wall. And I'm assuming if things had stayed, you know, obviously all things change, but if things had kind of stayed the way it was back then, you had plans on retiring from, from uh, Bell South, right? Oh, I'd have stayed there forever. Yeah. I'd still, I mean, Let's I see. mean, so I would have this year would be 28, I believe. It could be 20, I think it's 20 or 27, but, oh, man, that was, uh, it was, it was fantastic. Yeah. It, it was just, yeah, I'd have stayed till. Till they kicked you out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they said, you got to go. Right. So. <laughs> I love it. But, you know, this world, everything changes. So, you know, the situation uh, changes. It, it gets less tenable long term. And so what was the moment where you decided, I'm going to open my own business? I'd always kind of, I'd always cut grass and done a little landscaping and stuff like that on the side. And, um, at, in 2014, I, I quit, uh, AT&T, went to work at Nashville Electric Service. Mm -hmm. And the big moment was like every day at the end of the day, we we're standing there fixing the clock out and we'd all say, well, I got 10 years left. I got six years left. I got three years left. I'm like, are we in Shawshank prison? I mean, it just... Well, I can do what I want to do. You know, I'll have the insurance, I'll have this, and I'll have that. And I was like, so I had like eight years because at, at any issue, you have like a, a time and age thing. Mm -hmm. So for me to get my 30 or whatever it was, I had like eight years or nine years. And I thought to myself, what could I do in nine years? Oh, there was a big, mm, I don't know what you want to call it, just a big change there per se. And I was like, I got to go. I'll take this, took my retirement and just bought a bunch of more stuff and new tr another truck and trailer and mowers and all that stuff and said, hey, I'll give it five years. Okay. And so, I mean, did you talk to anybody that was in the business full time or anything like that? I get, you know, that's a, that's a big leap to go from I'm clocking in and out every day to I'm going to take what, what little bit of money I, I can pull out of this and go buy a truck and a trailer and mowers and, you know, tomorrow I'm in business. Well, it, at, at the time I had looked at like trying to find a business to buy, find a loan business. Because I just, working for uh, a big company or whatever, you're you're just kind of a number, mm -hmm. you know, and I think everybody can say it. But you get comfortable in, you know, I've got benefits, I can retire one day, you know, I can take my, I can get, I can get harnessed up every morning to the plow here for him. Then when I get done, you know, everybody hits the door running. But I mean, now I, like, I don't really care. Like I'm, you know, I got insurance through Farm Bureau. I mean, I'm fairly healthy dude. I don't, you know, so it's really not, it's not that bad. Like it's not as scary as I thought it was going to be, but I've, I tell you, I've been very prayerful about things and just tried to take things as they come. I haven't done 
some Google reviews and stuff like that, but I haven't done anything else. But I've had just stuff just kind of come my way, and I'm just like, whoa, I guess I'm going the right direction. I think that's well, one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on is, you know, there's there's this entitlement in the world these days where people think they're owed the business, they're owed customers, they're owed all these things, even people that have been around for a while. And that is just not how you do business. You know, a lot of yours is word of mouth. A lot of yours is referrals. A lot of it is the fact that you're doing great work out in the, uh, in the landscaping space. And they're not afraid to give out your name and your number and, and know that you're going to be doing great work for the, the person that you're referring them to. Well, I mean, it's, customer service has kind of been gone for a long time per se. You know, you call somewhere, you get like a phone tree, push this, push that, or most times leave a voicemail for somebody. Well, I do my darndest to pick up the phone. If I'm mowing or doing something, unless I'm like in a dangerous, in a compromising position with something that's dangerous, I'll answer the phone. Mm-hmm. And I've got like so many calls blocked because it's a spam call, but you don't know if you got to, if you're handling a business, you want to, you, you want the calls to get coming in. So I just, I answered the phone and I try to show up and, and I like uh, most of the time, uh, if it's a big project, like, like I'm there the other time I'm, you know, trying to get more business, meeting with people, looking at this, looking at that. So I just like to work. Yeah. Well, I will, I will say this. I mean, you made a good transition there because you know, you got a couple trucks and uh, another crew and, and all that. And you know, it's funny you mentioned the health thing too, because you know we had probably not seen each other in twenty years. Yeah, and I'm at the gym one day, and you're on the other side of a wall, so I can't even see you, but I hear your voice, and there ain't anybody else <laughs> that sounds like Jason Lewis. Uh, yeah, and yeah. so we started chatting and whatnot, and I remember pretty early on, like within a, one of our first conversations, which I think that was like your first year of business or, or close to it. Um, and you said, I don't want any more yards or I don't want any more business than, than I can physically do myself. And I love how that has evolved over the last few years. And you know, now you're doing what triple the business. Yeah, we are. Um, uh, yeah, it went from X, you know, the first year me and one other guy. And then the next year it was, uh, one truck and two guys. And I was kind of like, managing and like i got enough for that truck to do but then i you know got more calls so i kind of went out on my own and do do what i could do and then uh last summer uh it kind of i bought another isuzu and I, that was me and i needed help and so i i've been just crazy happenstance with william and maria and you know they're from guatemala I mean, how did they get to Ashton City and me get hooked up with me? Right. Because they, I just, I just got to get out of the way. Yeah. Like, they're kind of like me. They like to work. So, and they're not scared to, you know, get dirty, per se. So, uh, now it's them on the truck and I'm, I have meetings a lot of times or I'll go, we've uh, got into irrigation and um, we do lots of tree work. Uh, just lots of other stuff for me to be doing per se than like on the truck. So uh, you just kind of got to evolve with it or, you know, but I just totally humbled. Well, yeah. it, it's great to see. And uh, so now you've got two of the big landscaping trucks plus, plus your truck. So mm-hmm. potentially three crews running at any, any particular time. Yep. And uh, you know, I think consciously, you've made a big push towards commercial accounts and really kind of trying to decide what that, what that right customer looks like for you. What's the perfect customer. So I guess if you will kind of walk people through, like how, how did you, how did you kind of nail that down? And then once you figured out that's where you wanted to go with things, like how did you go about getting more commercial accounts? Well, just, just happenstance. I was uh, working in the still, and I went to this little HOA down uh, West End area, and I was outside, and the lady was, she come out, and we were talking for a second, and I said, well, hey, who does your landscaping or whatever? And she said, she was not happy with the current fighter, and I said, well, I, I'd like to, to do it. It wasn't, it's not much, really, and uh, she said, well, yeah, let me get your information, yada, yada, yada. 
So went through uh, a management company. You know, you have to give them all your insurance and your license and all your business license, all that stuff. And uh, I quickly found out that like, so they wanted, they wanted all this stuff done, you know, four or five line items. And then, um, you know, mowing mulch, trimming, uh, leaf removal, all that stuff. So uh, let's just say for easy math, the total was $6,000. Well, they're going to give me 500 bucks a month for 12 months i said now there we go that's that's cash flow that's like you know my bills come monthly so mm -hmm. that's going to help me so that really you know so I, I now the management that property management company i work with i have we have like six i think and it really helps with you know a good good steady cash flow but we have lots of re residential customers as well and um, but for me, that was like, okay, my bills come monthly. This helps me. So my customer is the, the person who wants service all, not just cut my grass and go, they want like, you know, I want, I need mulch, I need this, I need that. And that way, you know, you, you're, you know, you're somewhat of a, a they're a client cause they want numerous things. And a lot of times they'll call you, Hey, I got this over here. I got this not working or this. And I'm like, huh, well, I'm, I'm not like a, you know, professional, but I can fix that. That's easy. You know, just, oh, they look at you and like, you know. Well, you help them out. Or even even if you just referred them, I mean, because that's, that's one of the other things that I think you're doing really well is you're surrounding yourself with other great professionals in that space because I've used your, your full-blown, like, tree guy that's yeah i've used your stump guy yeah like, josh yeah. and 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 those guys are fantastic oh I, i've i've been blessed i mean just been blessed with good folks around me and you know i'm gonna have to just throw you on the bus because you were once meeting up with you again at the gym and like that first year like you were really like man just it's this it's it's and i was i have no idea about business and all this stuff man we would sit down at the storage unit there and we would talk and you were like well this is this and this, you know this this was uh, you know me me my lane is like getting my hands dirty you is kind of like business and this is what this and i'm like huh yeah, i just don't know what i don't know but and some people they they don't want to they don't want to help you they don't want to share they're like you know no you you'll you know like well that's that's you were not that way and you know then you know us getting reacquainted back then i mean i was like oh you were doing what you were this you were uh, i mean you've got a great story too somebody needs to interview you <laughs> on this podcast so but uh you helped me and said hey this is this I, you just really opened my eyes to a lot of way things work like you said having good people around you because like if a tree falls or something like that, that's no problem. But like, if they need a big tree took down by the house, I got to call Hudson. And there's sometimes there's a big stump left. Well, we call Josh on the grind and Hudson with champion tree. So we, you know, and then, well, you got me hooked up with Rosemary. No, oh, that, hey, that was a game changer right there. <laughs> oh, that was the biggest game changer. She was just absolutely, um, totally Totally game changer. Well, I remember, I remember us having a conversation, and and you were talking about the things in the business that you struggled with. Not that were hard, but they they just sucked the life out of you. And you were like, I just, I just want to be out there, either talking to customers, getting new customers, uh, servicing my existing customers. You know, I, I want to be out there doing the work, and the billing piece, and the you know answering the phone, and the, this and the scheduling. And I was like. Well, quit fighting with it just hire somebody and so you know introduced you to rosemary and then how did, how did that go whoa so just you really your introduction to rosemary is like totally way outside the box for like i think a lot of people because when you were in the cell phone industry you y'all you know you outsource things to different places well that's nothing that a your average redneck does he just you know thinks about stuff to get done well you know, Rosemary lives in Costa Rica and she used to outsource things to Sprint where you worked or y'all outsourced stuff to her. Mm -hmm. Well, she opened up a business, kind of a remote assistant or they call it virtual, but she's real. So I don't, 
know the virtual and remote. But anyway, so we communicate through uh, Zoom, WhatsApp, email, stuff like that. But like Marco Polo, mm-hmm. introduced to Marco Polo. So I'll send her a Marco Polo, which is a video text. Yep. Is that what you call yeah. that? Yeah. And uh, just, hey, can you do this? Can you look at this? Can you, this customer called about this? And like, she knows my software, my email, pad. like she knows that stuff better than I do. But she's just all the office uh, paperwork type stuff. Her and her team, like they just, I don't have to think about it. I just, they just automatic every month. They send it all out. They keep up with uh, who's paid, who hadn't paid, uh, just everything. And it's all kept in the software. So you have records. I mean, it's just, and then I have uh, my mom. She's an accountant. They have an accountant firm of Clarksville. So they do all my money type stuff or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, just like you said, you, you keep good people to help you with stuff. And that's just, you know, it, it's hard to kind of share um, tasks or responsibility. Well, I think it goes back to that mentality of you were trying to only have as, as much work as what you could have physically hold on to. And, you know, one of the things I saw is, you know, the billing part of it, the scheduling part of it, that was just draining your energy. You know, I'd come in and, you know, for two hours you were working on the schedule and you, you were more stressed than if you were cutting down, you know, 50 trees. <laughs> um, and so, you know, for, for me, when I hit something that is not, uh, is not necessarily difficult, but it's just something I don't want to do. Well, if I can hire somebody to do that at a reasonable cost that then allows me to do the high value things that I need to be doing, well, then it is, it's, it's the right business decision. And I think you came to that pretty quickly. I, I did. You're exactly right. Cause, but there is that, you know, you have to kind of go from doing all the work yourself to like, you know, okay, it's okay to do this. But, and I was thinking about the money paying her and all like that, but like, it's very, very reasonable. Mm-hmm. And she can do more or less, but I mean, for what I pay her, it's absolutely worth it. Cause I mean, uh, if you free up your time, you can go out and make more money than if you were doing the stuff that you really don't want to do, or you're just don't like to do per yeah. se necessary, but you know, so. well, and you may not be able to hire that assistant just right out of the gate in the first three months or something. But at, at some point, you're actually holding yourself back from, from taking care of more clients and, and more higher paying gigs for doing this uh, lower value task that needs to be done. Um, and, and the way I try to get people to think about it is, um, let's just say I can make $200 an hour with my best type or more ideal clients. And this I can hire this scheduling piece or this billing piece done for $15 an hour. Well, in order for me to do the billing and the scheduling, I have to clock out of my $200 an hour job and clock into my $15 an hour job. And I don't know about you, but I know I want to be clocked into that 200 and all of my yeah. team members, my, all of my team members need me to be clocked into that 200. Exactly. Exactly. If you, I mean, first of all, like I said, you have a team, mm-hmm. like I, I do my best not to say employee or they work for me. I try to say we work together. You know, I'm just the uh, janitor, coach, whatever you want to call it, because they do, I mean, if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't, this wouldn't be where it is today. So, but yeah, you're exactly right. Like, you know, you can spend the 15, whatever it is for the part-time person, or like saying, go, go do something that's going to make you some money. Yeah. Like, you know, what, just more money. Yeah. So, well, and selflessly and selfish at the same time, because one, it's better for your whole team that you're out there doing the high act, high payoff activity. Also, even for your uh, virtual assistant, so that they get to continue to work for you. You know, for, it's good for everybody. It's not just good for you. It, it is really, truly good for the entire team. Um, and, you know, again, it takes a level of maturity to, to understand that. It does. It does. And uh, I'll have to say through this, uh, adventure mm-hmm. per se like i've i've kind of t- used social media per se like uh just uh, people like jocko willink and uh cam haynes and joe rogan all them have they just have this big personality in life but 
And it's not about, and their total thing is, you got to do the work. There's no shortcut. There's no hack, per se, or whatever. There, it's like, you got to get up, put your shoes on, and go to work. I mean, if you want to make if you want to make a living, you got to get up and go to work. It, it it's you know, and that's what they really really uh, emphasize. Yeah. And Jocko, he really emphasizes. It's a book called Extreme Ownership, and I don't know if you read it or whatever, but I have. Yeah, yeah it's a good one. It is, and like he t- he, you know, they ask him to come in, and he'll just go straight to the president of the owner and say, "Hey, you're not doing what you're supposed to do because this guy over here doesn't understand what's going on." If you know and he don't, that's on you. Mm-hmm. So I mean, read some other good books, the E Myth. Um, well, you just wrapped up a mastermind group, didn't you? We did. Yeah. We did at uh, Pinnacle Bank, and I should say that was good. It was um, I my the guy that make Larry gave me the book when I first like he knew that I was going to start. But he said, "Here's the book. Read this because it's it really did open my eyes to." If you want to work for yourself, that's one thing. But like, if you want to have a business to where it's somewhat sustainable for you and your family and others, it's not just getting up and going to mowing. I mean, there's that's that's just work. Mm-hmm. If you want to have a business where like you you can do more than just you, uh, there's a lot more to it than just getting up and going to work. You got to go to meetings and. I don't mind that, but like, there's just stuff that you have to do. It just takes time that it's just a different mindset and you know, it's working. It's working. And I love that you took that from that and, and went through the mastermind group, you know, uh, Larry Roberts down at Pinnacle bank, they do a great job with that. He tries to do one, you know, like every quarter they do. And a lot of people have come through that. I, I did it, I don't know, like six or seven years ago. Um, but it does, it, it, you know, it, 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 I don't think it matters what level of business you're at. You're going to find nuggets either in the book or in the group that you then can go put into action. Right. And there, and you know, there's, it's used like six people, I think, but all, everybody's in a different position, a different place in their business, or they work, uh, at a place of business and they're just trying to, I don't know, educate themselves and see what's going on. But yeah, the book really opened my eyes to like, oh, just it's way more than a truck trailer and some and a mower. That's so right. It's a different mindset, but it's it's fantastic. It is. It is. Well, I want to be real with people though. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. Oh um, no. So what went wrong in the process? <laughs> like what 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 mistakes did you make that you were just like oh. Oh, that's that's some I didn't know tax or some stupid tax or man I wish somebody had told me oh yeah there, there's a lot of those um you know just you get fired up for mowing season and then like November you're like oh what am I gonna do now for me at the beginning you know it really wasn't about like money so I've had to learn to charge more for my time and, you know, not that I want more money, but like, you know, you pay your taxes and gas and business license and auto insurance. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot. I'm not complaining, but like, it's just a lot more than what I had anticipated. So I was like, golly, I just have to, you know, but, um, and having to let some customers go. Uh, because you can be there all day and they're still not going to be happy, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And some people just want the grass cut. Yeah. But you got another customer over here. They want, you know, they, they want to, you know, you call, they want to call you all the time. Hey, can you do this? Can you do this? Like, yeah. So that helped to help keep everybody employed. Sure. Well, you know, and, and for a lot of business owners, you know, they have that loyalty to those first customers, but at the same time, you can outgrow a customer. And I think it's all about how you, how you do that, how you kind of set the sunset, that relationship It's not, you just didn't show up on a Saturday or you didn't show up and cut that week. It's, you know, I think, I think most of the time you're trying to get them with somebody else, uh, so that they're not left in the lurch, but at the, at the same time, so that you can go do the, the bigger and better and more, uh, I don't want to say needy, but the, the clients that need more services. Well, like you said, the $200 job over here to the, 
you know, fifteen dollars up. But it, it's not that you're not appreciative. It's just you know, to to grow and to to be able to do more, you have to kind of keep going. But I do like any customer I've ever let go. I've always made sure that I give them an option. Said, hey, I always I always check with the dude first, friend, and like. First of all, I, you know, um, I know him. Mm-hmm. I know he's going to show up, do it. And then the customer, I say, hey, I'm sorry, we're trying to grow this and that. And then, you know, I say, but I do have a friend, glad to take you over if you're interested. And nine hours of the time, they say, yeah, send, you know, send him my number or whatever. And so far, so good. And and that's and that's what happened in in uh, to. Me getting to Nashville, I had a friend who said, hey, this guy's getting out of the landscaping business and got 18 or 20, and um, he wanted to sell them. And he, like you said, he made sure everybody was, was good with it. So you had a you know, a good chance they were going to stay, and that's been the best thing. Like all of them have stayed except for just a few, but people have moved. Um just just change per se a lot of us people move one person passed away but just just life happens but but that got me into the market in the area that i want to be in we live in we're in our city so we come up briley and just stay in west nashville area kind of west end to bellevue like mm-hmm. I, I i'm trying to keep that area small so you're not like going all over town because nashville's a big place well and you're you know you're not making any money between one location and the next right. so to keep your guys you know busy and and making money and you making money you need those yards as, as close as possible to kind of specialize in an area and I, I i think and correct me if i'm wrong here you guys it's it's almost like you've got different areas that you hit different days of the week typically obviously weather dependent yeah we so monday we're usually uh, at a big manufacturing place in ashton city mm-hmm. and and stay in Ashton City, then Tuesday Ashton City, then Wednesday Thursday Nashville, and I've uh, tried to keep a four day work week ever since we started because either somebody wants something else done, we can do on Friday, or it's weather. Mm-hmm. So we've done that, but uh, it's it's worked out well, and you know just trying to keep everybody busy through the whole year is the best thing. But yeah, Nashville has been you know, that's been the best. Um, I knew I had to kind of move out of Ashton city if I wanted to get the commercial accounts and stuff like that. Cause it, uh, just not very many in Ashton city really. Sure. So. I got you. Um, you know, what, what's something that you wish somebody had told you like, you know, um, as you were starting this business, maybe before you even bought equipment, you just wish if you, you know, if you could go back and give yourself a piece of advice, what would that be? Mm. Enjoy it and and uh just pay attention to i mean there's so i mean you when you're in the landscaping business you see that's what you see is you see all the landscape and lawn care trucks like there's lots of big companies out there so just just try to you know just try to pay attention and like um and show up mm-hmm don't don't drop the ball because like if you do it's just sitting there yeah so you've kind of doesn't go anywhere if you don't take it with you yeah so. well, i feel like one of the big changes i saw you make is you know you started with a truck and trailer yeah which you bought specifically for for this <laughs> yeah and then you know first really kind of just as soon as you started making some money it was like nope there's a reason you see those azuzu landscaping trucks and now you Absolute, got a couple of those. Absolutely. So for me, I was, you know, on the truck and the trailer, you could lock stuff up. It was kind of like its own little thing and you could use the truck. Well, man, here in Nashville, traffic and places here and there, i seen landscape trucks. I said, I'll try one. Oh, goodness. Total game changer. Like, you ain't going to worry about that stupid trailer. You know, teach somebody how to drive something with the trailer, how to back it up. This is kind of like driving a big, long 70s Cadillac. I mean, it, it's when you put all kind of stuff in there with you. And you've got toolboxes. I mean, it's kind of like a a, a rolling shop and whatever you might need. Because somebody might, 
be at somebody's house and you might need to dig something up or cut part of a tree down so you can keep all your stuff on there and you, you've just it's oh yeah big game changer big well, game changer and how did you get through that that mental process because you know at the time i remember you had a truck and a trailer and you were set and then you know came across an opportunity to to buy a truck but that was a big jump i mean you it ain't like you were crushing it then <laughs> You know, you were you were still slugging it out every day, and so I, I mean, I guess how'd you get the courage to make that leap and buy that first truck? Well, I I guess I kind of go back to the standing there at the time clock. I'm like, you know, so because I, because I, I took my retirement, uh, you know, majority of it, and just took it out before one k. Because to be honest, none of us are guaranteed another minute or second on this earth, and you know. Everybody talks, you know, it, it seems like th- this whole, like, America, mm-hmm. and and don't take this the wrong way, I don't want to be taking it the wrong way, but, like, you're geared, you're in, you're, it's engineered for you to get up from 8 to 5, you're going to school already, when you're a kid, you're 8 to 5, and then they um, uh, encourage you to go, to go to college, 8 to 5, to get a good job, to work 8 to 5. And get a degree to work at a nice, good job. And, and those jobs are all needed. But, like, I'm not engineered. I finally stopped fighting it. Like, I'm not engineered to go be hitched up to somebody's wagon all day. Not being selfish. I just, like, I'm, I have to say, I, I can do more than most. I'm, I'm not like, you know, don't take it the wrong, I'm not trying to be arrogant at all, but, like, you know, I don't mind working. Like I can work as, you know, I can get up and get my hands dirty and stay going all day. I mean, it's, it's, you know, and a lot of people can, but like, you know, just a lot of people can, but they don't. Well, I think that's, that's, I think that's part of the difference. No, you, you're exactly right. But I was going to, I didn't, I just, I try to tread lightly and I try to live a quiet life, mind my own business work hard with my hands so I don't have to depend on anybody. A famous man named Paul wrote that. So you look that up. They want to know where it came from. But anyway, um, I, I just really, I don't know. I, I, in 2020, I started listening to the Robertson podcast, uh, unashamed. And, you know, the, to me, uh, just a, just a good man, just great family and just everything they stand for. Like they just went to work. And they found something they enjoyed doing. So that's what they did. I knew years ago, my stepbrother brought over a zero turn mower. And I was like, whoa. I got on that thing and like, I was like, whoa. But I also loved to play in the dirt. And I worked at sawmill. And like, I just loved working with my hands. But, it, you know, it. but the whole world that you are you have to go to school and all that stuff, you know, when you're young. So it, it kind of gears you to work somewhere and for somebody. Yeah. So well, and you did for what? 20. Yeah. 25 <laughs> such years. And, and you know, but there was always like work at the sawmill, you know, I worked for a dude. It wasn't a company. It wasn't a big giant company. Larry Gibbs was there. Like he was, a you know, just an average dude. And, there, and I think that's, um, Nowadays, you either work for somebody or you work for yourself. That seems like common sense, but like a lot of people, they're not going to try to work for themselves. Yeah. They, it's too scary. It, it is. It is scary. But, you know, I just, you know, just have to have faith and it's been working. I love it. So I'm, I'm just blessed as I can be and just, oh, I got, I just very humbled. Well, and I, I know you touched on this with some of the podcasts that you listen to and those types of things, you know, as you've been growing up this business, you know, what podcasts, who, who's been a part of it? Like who's mentored you? Like just all the things like, you know, who can, who can you give a nod to that? That's absolutely been either game changing or, or a part of a part of your growth. Well, I'll have to say Jocko, like he's got a great podcast and like, you know, it seems nowadays, like you touched on before, people don't want to work. Like, that's a whole big thing. Like, I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. I mean, 
I don't know that your average high schooler mm-hmm. boy knows how to change a tire, knows how to check his oil, or even knows how, like, if the batter is dead. I don't know what to do. I'm calling somebody. I mean, dude, when I when it was when I was young, like you got to figure it out. Yeah, but and that's and, and I go back to Jock because he's like he his story is he wanted to be uh, you know special ops type guy you know a commando. Well, the Navy SEALs they don't they don't give those tridents out. You've got one week of hell first, you know, in the very beginning, and that weeds out everybody because I mean, but. It's it's just that the thing. Like do the work. There's no get your sheet, get your get up. I try to get up every day at five. I think it's like five oh two. I'm just weird, but I try to get every day at like five oh two, even Sunday. Like try to keep that schedule. And you know, even if I just get up and piddle around or but when you work for yourself, you have kind of a small business, you know, you're you're always thinking about it, you know, what do I need to do and it doesn't have to be much, but every day you're kind of, I guess, um, keeping your finger on the pulse, maybe. And uh, and Jocko's like, all the dudes he interviews are like dudes that have, like, some are fighter pilots, some were like, in Vietnam, some were POWs. But, like, that generation up to, well, up to the cell phone and, you know, like, you know, the smartphone... There, there, there was no easy anything. Now you've got like influencers and all that stuff and they just make videos. But that, uh, what you see in the video or the clip or whatever they show you, that's just their, that's a happy moment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people compare that to their inner feelings of how they're feeling. And that's not an equal thing. I guess I keep going back to like, you got to get up, put your shoes on. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, you can't, I mean, people, even adults are like, if they have a few minutes, they're on their phone, just, just scrolling, just looking. And, you know, I like to look too. don't get me wrong, but like, I got to go to work too. Yeah. But, well, and I, I will say this a lot of times, you know, uh, when I, if I talk to you earlier, you know, you, you're probably out on a run It you know, <laughs> it's barely daylight. Well, I, I've had to like, I have to get everybody going, but yeah, I try to get some miles in. I'm not, I'm not like, you know, running marathons or nothing, but like work feels good. Yeah. Like to go out and break a good sweat or like go to the gym. Like I go to the Y a few times a week and, um, you know, the like after workout, like the, the sauna, oh, that's just, that's good suffering right there. Yeah. Like I enjoy that. Well, you know, again, we, we kind of uh, met each other again after 20 years at the gym. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I walked around the corner, like, you know, you were writing something. And I saw the, the muscles in your arm <laughs> flexing. And I was like, dude, is ripped. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, has health been a big thing for you for the last 25 years? Or, I mean, what, I guess, how did you, how did you get to where you are now? Well, I'll, so I was at NES at the time. And I, I just turned like 40, 41. And like, you know, I was older when I started there and was that right? For anyway, it's been a while, but somebody said, get out of the way, old man. And I said, what did you say? And dude, that just totally, I mean, I said, no, sir. And like, Hey, that just lit me on fire. Like I started going to the gym with the dude that worked with Holman and, you know, we started going to the gym and like, it wasn't like I stopped, you know, I still eat garbage. Don't get me wrong, but like it's not every day, every meal. Mm-hmm. Like now, but like I did work out when I was young, like seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. But then when you go to school and you get this good job, and you're like, man, I got a good job. Just go to work, and when you're there, you you're not really. It's nothing too strenuous at the phone company. It's just a lot of mind stuff. But I mean, it's work, but like it's not physical hard work sure. and. I remember once I got back going to the gym, I was like, man, I do miss this. Like I miss this, this right here. And that happened. And then uh, a dude from NES, another friend that I was in my department, uh, Ralph, we started going to a place here in Nashville and uh, you couldn't say, you know, it, it was, it's called fit factory, but you can't, you, at the time it was, 
it was cro- it's somewhat CrossFit, but you can't say CrossFit because you have to pay for that. It's right. like trademarked. So they did everything just like, but like, oh, that was way better than just lifting. Like you do, you do some stuff with weights, kettlebells, something like that. Then you jump rope for, you know, you just did all kind of stuff. Then you like run, go half a mile run. And like, I was like, oh, this really sucks. This is good. This is really good. So, uh, that I like, just, I like how you said that. Oh, this sucks. It's really good. <laughs> it, I mean, but I mean, when you're a kid though, and you were playing baseball or you're riding your bike or whatever, when you were really, really like doing some work and like, it was hard, that was fun to you. Yeah. You know, if you're out in the woods or you're riding your bike or playing baseball with everybody, rest kids, like you ran like crazy to first base or whatever it was you were doing, you were playing football, you ran like crazy. And that, that's what. I think a lot of people, would, it's not a big thing anymore so for younger folks. They just don't want, I mean, a lot of people don't want to, to do stuff like that. Well, you know, and I think this could be somewhat controversial out in the space, but, you know, uh, that's really kind of the role of testosterone is it makes effort feel good. It does. You know, and as, you know, if we look at testosterone levels just across the board in the last 30, 40 years, it just keeps going down Mm -hmm. just across the board. And so, you know, I I think that plays a a factor into, you know, these, this younger generation, I won't even, it's not even the younger generation. I will just say people by and large that don't want to try or don't want to do the hard work, you know, is, is it partly due to low testosterone? I do lots of too much research on stuff. So, uh, you know, men back in the fifties and Mm forties, Their average testosterone level was like 1,500. Well, what happened after, after World War II was we got this, uh, you know, uh, processed food and all this stuff that made like, you know, people didn't cook as much. There was a lot of stuff that was like quickly done, mm-hmm. quickly made. Well, you know, if you keep food for a long time and it doesn't go bad, to me, they had to add something to that. Like yeah. there's a lot of extra stuff that we probably have no idea about. And somebody a long time ago told people that, you know, sugar's good, fat's bad. I'm like, after all this research, like, your body, your brain, like, if you threw it out on that table right there, it's a big blob of fat. Yeah. So, I mean, your body, it's, you know, too much, yes, it's bad for you. But, like, eating the fat on a steak or something like that, uh, that's good for you. Eating a big spoonful of sugar. That's definitely not good for you. That's right. I mean, white sugar, white milk, and white flour will kill you. What uh, Laird Hamilton quote. So I just, a lot of different things. But yeah, I, I do try. I've, but that kicked off my health thing. It was like, no way. You called me the old man. I'm 40. And like, it just really <laughs> it got, put a burr under my saddle. I, but but what a great thing. What a what a favor he did for you. Oh, yeah. You know? like oh, he, yeah. he was He was, he was you know... Uh, throwing some shade your way and boy, it worked. <laughs> oh yeah. Cause I, that dude at 40, if I'd kept going, would not be able to do what I'm, what, what I do now. Like, I mean, some days it's physical. Yeah. Cause I mean, we just, it's just what happens. And I think that also made it to where, you know, I didn't mind doing something hard mm-hmm. because I'd gotten in that, that, that mode rut. Yeah. Mutt, a, a road mode of, um, easy. Mm hmm. You know, now, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not the, that's not the way really. You know, one of my, one of my favorite sayings is what's the difference between a rut and a groove and it's success. Mm. And so you can get used to being successful just like you can be, get used to being unsuccessful, whether that's in health or in business or, you know, in personal relationships, whatever that is. And it takes action. It takes it takes you balling up that fist and being like, no more Eggs, yeah. in order to get out of that rut and, and to start generating success. Yeah. And one of my favorite sayings I tell my kids and other is like, if you do what's easy, your life's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. If you do what's hard, your life will be easy. Cause if you do stuff that's hard, you're, you're, you're good. Yeah. If you do, I mean, so I, I try to encourage my kids that way. And like, you know, I just, People in general just, you know, it's not that hard. You're going to be okay. Yeah. You know, not have to, you have to, you have to give somebody a finger. That's right. <laughs> so it's not like, well, speaking of family, how, how are the girls doing? They're good. They're good. Yeah. Uh, Anley's senior year. 
Uh, M's starting college. Victoria's out working. She's got her own place. Everybody's good. It's yeah. Being a dad was a big. I was like, oh gosh, look at this little thing. What? It's just mine. Like it's not going away. And it depends on me. <laughs> it depends on me every day. Yeah. So now it's mainly, you know, different. But like at that point, it was like they needed you for everything. Yeah, you got castles. I mean, you when you get a youngin. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it's it's a shock to the system. It is. But it's it also is. fun. It is. And I, I will say, I think you know what love is, is when you have a child. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you, if you, I mean, and not trying to throw shame or whatever, but like if you have a child or, I mean, even a dog or something that something depends on you, mm-hmm. that's a, that's really different than just you. Oh, yeah. You got to care for the, that, that person, that thing, whatever. Yeah. Uh, especially when they depend on you for everything. Exactly. So your feelings and what you need are, they're in the equation, but that might just be a little bit. Yeah. Well, I almost think too, if you, if you, if you, if your heart's in it, that having kids is almost like a a God thing from a a different perspective in that, you know, as, you know, uh, as a Christian, you know, I, I feel like God's always watching. Oh yeah. And, but so is your child. You're teaching your child good habits, bad habits, all those things. Mm-hmm. And so you you better be in check. <laughs> oh, yeah. Little bunnies have big ears. That's right. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so, you mean, in big eyes, too, I guess. But, like, they always they hear, you know, you, mm-hmm. you know, you do something dumb and you're like, oh, and you're like, whoa, I got mm-hmm. just green and bare. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. You know it instantly. There's that. You're like, oh. It's definitely worth it. Yeah, man. Definitely worth it. Uh, what's next for uh, LG Landscaping Services? I mean, what's uh, what's on your horizon? Well, I just, I'm just, like I said, just, just being kind of prayerful. I, I don't like, to be honest, I'm, I'm, it's kind of like eating an elephant. I'm just trying to do it one bite at a time. I don't, um, I like to, uh, you know, when people call, I like to answer the phone. I, I like to be present per se and be able to have a conversation or come see you or whatever. And I, I still like to keep that customer service. So I'm just growing slowly. I don't want to, you know, if you get, I mean, you could definitely probably grow more if you wanted to, you could push the gas on advertising and all that stuff. But I mean, I just, you know, well, you say you're growing slowly, but you're tripled in size in the last three years. Well, so, but I it's, mean, it, it's solid. It, it is, but I, I mean, it's, I still don't have any idea how to name my number, but I'm, I'm good with it. Mm-hmm. I'm thankful. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's not me. So, but well, it, it is you, in my opinion, it's you doing the great work and it's them not being shy about sharing. Cause I mean, if you think about it, people always want to have a guy, right? Yeah. Or, right. you know, or the girl, like, oh, you need X. Call my guy. Yeah. You need X, call my girl. Like, yeah. And and they feel good about that. Yeah. Because now, I, like, I'm sharing my rock star with you, and I, I, I really do think that's been the key to, to your success. Um, and at the same time, having the courage to do those tough things, like buying a group of yards, you know, or buying that truck so that you could have another crew or, you know, all these things that a lot of people are too afraid to do. You're right. It's scary, but like, like I said, I've just been prayerful about it, and man, I just having faith, and uh, it's it's been working. So I'm just kind of, I've, I do will, I would, I would like to get to where we have that. Um, at this point, I kind of have an idea of what uh, a basic cost of what it is to operate. That is to pay everybody insurance fuel pay me all that kind of stuff i kind of have a, a, a base level and if i could get that in the contracts and if i get to that level that i you know i'd like to see what that looks like because you kind of have um a good basis you have, you have a good constant flow of this mm-hmm. so you know pretty much everything's taken care of so you can do something you can like do some other stuff too. Like yeah. you can add stuff to it. Well, I think, I think in every business owner's kind of a growth pattern, there's that, that place where now you got something to lose. So you're, you know, sometimes it, it curbs your enthusiasm for taking risks and, but 
you know, kind of what I hear you saying is if I can grow my commercial contracts to the point where the, the, the baseline cost is covered, well, then I feel more comfortable being, you know, bold again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because well, now you got people that depend on the, you, not just your household, but team members. Oh yeah, I, we I have uh, very blessed um, uh, William and Maria and his brother. That they're from you know Guatemala. They've come up here just you know like you know it's got to be better than I guess it's better than Mexico. I guess so. They just but you know so I think about not just me, but like I got to make sure I pay them. So if I can get to that where everybody's taken care of and it's kind of just on the regular basis, that's good. Um, and then, you know, you kind of get to a place where you can take a breath and you're ready to take a little bit more. Yeah. So, but. Uh, so yeah. some somewhere out there right now, somebody is in a nine to five or an 11 to three or, or three to 11, whatever second shift is or, you know, and they're they're looking at that time clock like you can't get you they're wishing time away you know yeah um what's your advice to them what's your advice to that person that is that is standing in that line around all those other people wishing (laughs) they were at home um what, what do you tell what do you tell them uh man you're not guaranteed anything so you might as well try i mean if if it all went downhill it all just kind of got sour you know, I could sell all this stuff, you know, get rid of, you know, have all my debt gone as far as the business and kept my, you know, kept what I could do. I mean, I'd, I'd still be able to eat and pay my bills, stuff like that. That was a thing to look at, too. Like, if this failed or this something happened or whatever, I mean, a buddy of mine, Daniel Welch, he's in uh, construction in Clarksville. He's like, well, can you sell it? And I'm like, well, yeah, I can get rid of it. He goes, well, you don't your debt's almost gone i mean you know so you don't you know that's the thing yeah so i mean there, it, it but i will say taking that leap but i guess you have to kind of know what you want some people don't uh they've never done enough to really know what they want to do i mean i think young people nowadays they don't know what they want to do because they you know they didn't life is just not the same when me and you were 16, 17, as it is for a young person, 16, 17 years old today. True. It's just not different. It's just different, you know, and they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what they don't know. And, and unfortunately we have this point, click, receive, um, mentality, mentality. And, uh, that's the way the world is. But like, if they want to like, you know, before, if you wanted to, like see what something looked like or what, you know, like you thought about, Oh, what does New Zealand look like? You'd have to get out an encyclopedia mm-hmm. or you could maybe look something up on the computer and give you a couple pictures. Now there's uh, Instagram and all that stuff. And you can uh, go anywhere you want to go. And there's, there's no, somebody said one time, there's not much wonder yeah. left in the world. Like, you don't have to wonder. Oh, I wonder what that would be like. I wonder what this. Would be like. There, if you look, if you look hard enough on Instagram or wherever, and don't get me wrong, I love Instagram and like for all the places I'll probably just won't get to go. But you know, it's. But these young people, they they just oh, what's it look like? Won't click, see, go. Oh, oh, okay. They, I, you know. Well, I think that's where it's our job, especially with our children, but maybe with other people too, to instill a different type of wonder. And it's not wonder what it would look like, but wonder what it would feel like. Like, I wonder what it would feel like to get up and go to a job every day that I loved. Or I wonder what it would feel like to get up every morning and know that my house was paid for. Or that I didn't have debt. Or that, you know, fill in the blank, or that my health was improved, you know? I mean, you know, I was, I was 300 plus pounds, you know? I was, I was big for a long time, and I'm not small these days. But it takes that hard work. I mean, it ain't coming well, off. It didn't go. It went on easy, but it ain't coming off easy. No, no, that's a bad. That's a, that's the bad thing. I mean, it's easy to eat like ours. But yeah, I, well, I mean, hey, man, when I first met you at the gym, you know, you you were slimming down, but like you, you posted pictures and stuff like that, and I just we didn't we weren't we, we we didn't like in the same circle at that point. Yeah. But you come out of the gym, I was like, whoa, and now you're still you're still on the path. You're steadily working on it. Working on, but. There's a key word. You're working on it. Yeah. Like, 
I mean, people talk about steroids and shots, all this stuff. I mean, if you sat on the couch and took steroids, nothing's happening. No. You might lose a little bit of weight, but, like, you're not going to look like Arnold. They don't work unless you do. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, it, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah. You have to put forth some effort for, I mean, you know, when people get, and that's where I think people get nervous. Yeah. Having to do something they don't want to do, they de- haven't done, you know. And to me, that's not anxiety. That's not nervous. Yeah. To me, it would be on one of those boats approaching Omaha Beach in World War II here in shells and grenades and bullets whizzing by you and people screaming or you get jumped out of a plane into France and you see planes going out. Hey, that's anxiety. If you're in that plane or you're on that boat, Hey, I need to shut up. Yeah. And I think, I think it's because we have a misconception of what hard is or a misconception of what anxiety is Yeah, or fear. Mm hmm. It ain't, you know, you're, you're talking about something totally different than I'm afraid because I didn't do my work yesterday. You know, that yeah. it, one, you have control over the other, you don't. Mm-hmm. And, um, your life depends on you making the right choices. Kind of like what you said earlier. If you, if you choose hard today, tomorrow will be easier. Yeah. And, you know, thank goodness. And most of the time we have control over that. That's right. And, and back to Jocko, like he always says, you want to take a day off, take a day off tomorrow. He said the next day, you know, I'll take a day off tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It never comes. Right. But sometimes I like, I mean, I mean, he's honest. Like dude puts a picture of his Timex Iron Man or whatever he wears. And it's like four 30 every morning. Mm-hmm. But one morning though, I spent a while back. Like it said six 30. He goes, I think I needed more rest, but like he's honest about it. Yeah. Well, I think you, I think you actually have to listen to your body and, yeah. and not, not what you want, but listen to what it is screaming at you. Um, and it takes a while to get in tune enough to be able to know that, you know, it is, it does. Uh, cause otherwise, you know, comfort just wants you to just not every day. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know about you, but like, you know, I'll be 50 this year if I make it. So for me, sleep is a big thing, man. Like yeah. I, when I was just say 10 years ago, I didn't think much about it. Now I'm like eight thirty, nine thirty. 30. I need to go to bed mm-hmm. cause I just need sleep. Yeah. And it affects my well being, my mind. It affects a lot of stuff for me. I don't know about you, but like for me, it, it, like, if I don't get much sleep, I'm, uh, yeah, I pay for it the next day. I, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, we talk about, you know, trying to eat right and do right. I mean, you know, some days I don't want to, I don't want to lace this shit. You know, I don't want to do it, but like, you never regret going to the gym yeah. or, going for a run or doing something like that. Like if you had to, you know, let, I mean, uh, fall Creek falls for the mine just went there and he said, like, he said it was a good hike back to this big waterfall. He said, but the hike it. was well worth it. Yeah. You know? So I think a lot of people, um, uh, David Goggins was another one. Like uh, he's, he has this 40% rule. He says that most people give up at roughly 40%. Mm-hmm. They just like, oh, I, I I can't do no more. He said, you're only at 40%, bro. I mean, that. I think that's how people make it through like hell week and they make it through being a POW and, you know, but you just got to do what you got to do. You don't know how deep that well is until you find out. Exactly. That's right. You know, um, one of the things that we do on the Charge Forward podcast is we have this segment that is things we think but do not say. <laughs> Okay, here we go. <laughs> so we get a little controversial with that one. Okay. So so what's something that's on your list that you're like, you know what? This is one of those things that most people wouldn't say, but, you know, it's it's on people's minds. I would really say that, you know, people are lazy. Yeah. I, I mean, the general population out there, I mean, they're, they're lazy. And, like, if they can't, you know, like, uh, uh, just for me, I mean, I drive a lot and I'm here and there, but, like, traffic, hey, man, you'll see <laughs> You'll see who somebody is and isn't in traffic. Like even just for a a minute or like, I have like a three second rule at stoplight. Like if it's green, you I give you like three seconds. Mm-hmm. And I'll beep the horn if not. But like, hey, some people you beep the horn. Hey, they'll turn around and start. And they'll miss the, we'll miss the whole line. It's gone. You just you'd be like, okay, you just sat there the whole. There's five people behind me. I'm glad you can't see them. Oh yeah, they're just it's pitiful. 
But you're but you're right. In in, in a lot of situations, there's mm-hmm. a lot of laziness out in the world today. It is. And uh, and you know what? At, at times we've been one of them. Oh uh, yeah. You hey, know. But it, I'll but be it, the first to admit it. But it's about what you choose today. That's right. You know. That's right. Yeah. Well, I love it. I love yeah. it. I want to ask you that question. Oh. I don't know if, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this around here for you. <laughs> so, what's something that you would like to say that you don't say? Well, you know, I think it's uh, we touched on it earlier. It's it's this concept of toxic masculinity, and I think just in by and large, the the testosterone levels have dropped to the point where when a man just does what a man's supposed to do, whether it's stand up for his family, stand up for a woman, stand up for somebody who can't stand up for themselves, or get up and go do the work then they're chastised or, or they're, you know, labeled or fill in the blank with whatever that looks like um, just because it makes somebody else feel inadequate because they didn't choose to get up and go do it. And, you know, to your point about testosterone levels, I mean, yeah, if you go look at what testosterone levels were in the, you know, 60s, 70s, even 80s, um, you know, the, the low end was around 800 and the high end, I think, was around 12, 13, 1400. And, you know, those levels have trended down and really and truly, I believe it's because the insurance companies don't want to have to pay to help figure it out, to help fix it, or to send alarms to anybody, you know, you're, you're labeled as in range or out of range. Well, now you can be 200 and you're just barely out of range. I think, I think range is like 214 to, you know, 800 and don't quote me on that, but I think it's somewhere in that range somewhere. And, and really like you know, the top end right now is where, you know, an active male should be. Yeah. And, you know, so I think that causes some of the laziness is, you know, testosterone makes effort feel good. Well, there's, we're, we got a lack, lack of effort out there in the world right now. We do. The, I, I don't know about you, but I wear the old redneck badge with honor. Right. We need some more God fearing rednecks in this world. Yeah. Because, hey, when you look around, when you can't find somebody to do something or whatever, hey, if you know a redneck, he'll do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why you got get her done out there. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. When I, when I was 16, 17, man, we were cutting tobacco and hay, worked yeah. at a sawmill. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's just, a, but it's a different world, but like, there's still stuff to do. Like, dirty jobs guy. What's his name? I forgot. Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe. So Mike Rowe is like, He's kind of come out the last few years about like, you know, we need electricians. We need plumbers. We need, you know, because people just don't want to do that kind of work. They, or they, they might not know they like, I mean, like you might have somebody, they like start being an electrician or a framer or construction or whatever, you know, and like, well, this is, this is nice. This is, you know, I could do this. Yeah. Well, you know, I think about it too. Like, you know, think about just, social environments for dudes right you know yeah. you're you know get somebody's name and you're like what do you do for a living we want to know what you do yeah right you know some people are going to say well you know that's not how you network or whatever you know that's the wrong wrong question to ask no for a dude it's the right question what do you do you never know when you might inspire somebody else to do that same thing or maybe yeah. or maybe their son over here is, or maybe their daughter over here is. You know, um, my wife, you know, Emily's in cancer research, has been for 25 years. And it was because a friend of her dad's uh, had two daughters, and they were all at one of them's graduation party. And he was talking to Emily and was like, yeah, neither one of my daughters are interested in this cancer research field. And I think it's just where, you know, somebody should absolutely be. Well, Emily asked a couple questions and boom now she's headed to college that's what she's going to do that's what she went to college for and you know so she helps bring new cancer treatments to the forefront and it was because of conversation there you go well and part of it too is you want to figure out can can i help this dude can i help this guy yeah you know and and man that's been the biggest blessing yeah like being able we all know someone that you 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 know you you come across somebody that you know just you need, they need something done and man, you're able to help them. Yeah. And you fill in the blank on whatever that is, as far as it, it's, it's work, a call, I mean, uh, resources, it's, and man, Hey, you know, when you, when you just do a random act of kindness mm-hmm. or go, 
you see something needs to be done and you're like, oh gosh, you know, you, but like, you know what? I get up every morning. I'm forgiven. Hey, I, I, you know, this ain't me. You know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, managing this, this fiasco here, but you know, the almighty's, you know, uh, but yeah, Matthew kind of has like green lights. Like I wondered. He gave you the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Matthew McConaughey said he followed his green lights mm -hmm. to get to where he is. And, man, I, I quit work. And, like, one day there is a there's a community over in um, Chapmansboro area there. It's called Whifford Hill Estates. And mm -hmm. uh, most of the people there are pilots. So none of them are the grass. So I. Oh, yeah, they got an airstrip. Yeah, right? they got two, yeah. two runways there. And most of them find, like, you know, Cessnas or whatever to an airport. And they. They fly to go do whatever, you know, mm -hmm. they pilots for his Well, man, one day I, I, I'd never been in there. You gated, you can't get in there. Mm -hmm. I was, I just kind of decided to do this. And the, the guy who owns it, he bought the farm like, you know, 40 years ago. His name's uh, Ray Williams. And his son was mowing, he mowed. Mm -hmm. So, but he finally got too old. He just kind of quit doing it. And, uh, his, and his son took it. Well, I had thought, you know, it'd be great to have those. I called or I called him and said, Hey man, your son, you know, I found out his son did it. Well, son calls me. I'm getting out of this. You want him? Yeah. I'm there mowing at Ray's house, the dad, you know, and his house is right on like the runways here. Like he sees it all. Mm -hmm. And man, I'm mowing and I just look over. Oh, there's look to my left. Sorry. I'm going this way. Hey, here comes a plane landing and I'm just like, how did I get here? <laughs> I mean, who gets to see? And he, he was doing touch and goes, I think they call it. Okay. Like he was coming down and landing just for a second, then taking back off. Okay. So these, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Him as kind of, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't have an airplane, but just to be able to be in the gated community and like this guy just come, I'm mowing and he just, you get to see, I mean, but, but here's yeah. the thing that didn't happen by accident. You picked up the phone oh, yeah. and made the call. You oh, took right. action. That's the thing. That's the thing that a lot of people won't do is pick up the phone and take action. Yeah. You're so right. God gave you the ability. That's right. He to gave take the, the action. That's right. He gave the ability to call that dude. He gave him the inclination and, and that's, but you know, uh, yeah, just being able to help people and just all the places. I mean, Oh man, some of the people I've met. I mean, I have a country music. So I'm not bragging. I'm just, I'm just sharing how I've been blessed. Is mm -hmm. I have a country music star cell phone in my phone, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, I, that's a that was a green light. Yeah. Per se. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So I, I'm just gonna keep going. I love it. I said I give it five years and. It's, it's going pretty good. Yeah. I'll keep going. I love it, man. Well, I, again, you know, I, I think the world of you, you're crushing it out well, there. And uh, I'm just proud of the work that you do and just the, the type of human you are, man, really. And glad that you're in my in my world. Glad that you came out and joined us today. Uh, I'm, I'm humbled. And, and Jim, I'm serious. Like, dude, you were a, that first year, like the, you know, the first few steps of the hardest. Man, you were there. I mean, you were like, talk, talk to me. Just, you know, and you just coached me through the whole thing, this and that. And then, so, man, you were, man, you, you've, you've been there the whole time. So, I mean, I got a big thanks to you. And now I'm sitting in a, a podcast studio and I'm just like, wow. Well, it's, it's been, it's been fun. So absolutely. So is somebody out there, so everybody that's watching, like what's, what's a, maybe a nugget of advice that you'd give to somebody that's either in business, looking to get in business, maybe they're in a nine to five, whatever spot they're in, maybe they're a parent or just one nugget of advice or an ask that you have of them to, to take away from this. Just, just try. I love it. Just try. Give it a try. You're never going to know that you try. I mean, that's old saying, but like, it's, I mean, it's really not, if you don't mind doing the work, it's really not hard. It's right. a whole lot. It's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. That's great. Well, Jason, thanks for coming out today. It's it's been a pleasure chatting well, with you. I'm humbled. I'm very thankful and very very humbled you asked me. I'm your anytime.
Absolutely. Well, team, thank you for joining in the Charge Forward podcast. Again, I want to say special thanks to the team here at Hit Lab Studios, as well as our sponsors, Sense Custom Development and uh, Charge Forward Solutions. Until next time, I'm Jim Cripps. We'll see you later. Team, thanks so much for joining us for this episode of the Charge Forward podcast. Look forward to other amazing guests. And until next time, I'm your host, Jim Cripps. Special thanks, as always, to Nick Heider and the creative team at Hit Lab Studios here in Nashville, Tennessee. Special thanks to our sponsors, Sense Custom Development and Charge Forward Solutions. Please be sure to like and subscribe.